Who is perpetrating this um, uh, global domination? Well, let me put it like this. What you're looking at is something that started out, the people who actually started the think tank of it, two of them were born in 1906. Two Egyptians, one Indian, Maudodi, Hassan Albana, and uh, um, Said Katoub. There were two, three, four generations of clerics who were the equivalent of maybe what we call the Pentecostal mob, who began to set up para mosques, as it were, and who went back for a kind of fundamentalism that was not mainline fundamentalism in, in, in Islam. They were the ones who wrote the books, wrote the script, wrote the formulas. And it, it took about one, two, three, four generations of pieces like that before Osama bin Laden and Al Zawahiri sat down and perfected the model away from local applications into a global application. So what are we talking about here? We are saying that, frankly speaking, it is from the Middle East. That's why you find out that when you look at the supremacist move, its roots are actually from the Middle East, even though the people who wrote the, the scripts for it from uh, 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 India, was one was born in India, two were born in Egypt. Go to Al-Azhar University. In 1928, when the Muslim Brotherhood was put together, you know, for many years in Egypt, they had to be banned because they were so violent. Look, go and read all the literatures they provided. Go and read the generations of people who, who followed up on these things and how it developed onto what it is today. But if we have to make a comparison, what has happened in Egypt, it's not very likely that um, those kind of scenarios will play out in Nigeria. What do you think? I've heard people, when we said in 2000 that there will be suicide bombings in Nigeria, I think from 1999, we started having special interest meetings and trying our best. By the way, I served as a, I've served to advise at least three or four generations of Khan presidents. And when the displacement sequence starts, the first set of people it attacks is the Christians. They're the first it subdues wherever it goes. But the mistake that Christians are often making is that they now turn it into a Muslim Christian thing, not realizing, because I, I remember way back, I had the same party with one of the current presidents I was advising. They wanted to have a policy on Christian versus Muslim. I said, don't make that mistake. They said, why? I said, in a few weeks' time, these people are going to start killing Muslims who stand in their way. So what you're looking at is a supremacist ideology that wears the cover of a theology. So if as far back as 2000, 2001, 2002, we told people that suicide bombings would become practical and would become normal in Nigeria, and nobody thought it was possible, tell me what did you say again that you said, you cannot, what scenario did you say cannot run again in, in, in Nigeria? So, like, what so is in, in, Egypt? in Egypt? Please, you are <laughs> dealing with a very patient, lethal, cruel machinery. You know, uh, it's hydro-headed, and you say there are several areas that penetrate institutions, but political class is a, an important aspect. How far away or close are we to perhaps stemming the tide with our within our political space? I think the political class of Nigeria is a big problem because the corruption has affected practically all aspects of our society. It's endemic. It's, we have a culture of corruption. And the arrow head of the culture of corruption is the political class, because they are the ones who stand to gain the most privately by keeping people, you know, in, 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 uh, subdued. In fact, let me make a confession to you. About 2006, we were having a meeting when somebody who had been in a high office in Nigeria called me at the back and said, be careful, don't assume that because the first call of people that you're talking to, you assume that they should not be part of this conspiracy. And they said to me, and I asked him, I said, why? He said, look, I'm a businessman. I've occupied office. Some people approached me, spoke to me, made friends with me, and offered me a loan of about $4 million at a very insanely low rate. But he told me he began to smell a rat when he was asked to go to Sudan to come and sign for a loan he was to collect in Nigeria. So let's not deceive ourselves at all. What is facing us understands us, understands greed. If Sudan is a training ground, for ISIS, so those, the Israel that are now attacking, uh, approaching West Africa. Does it mean that the scholars from Sudan are also part of this conspiracy? Put the word was, what happened was once Osama bin Laden took up residence in Sudan with uh, uh, Zawahiri, they made Sudan their like template 
If you remember very well, why do you think Sudan had to split at the end of the day? If not, look, the world turned a blind eye. Janja weed, the, the, the slaughter, look at the template of what's going on in Sudan. Look back at, at uh, 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 the template of what's going on in Nigeria. Look back at Sudan before they were able to finally say, you know what? Leave these people alone. And the international community came in and said, where is Southern Sudan? Please separate. Every time the global community tried to inter uh, intervene in Sudan in those days, the AU itself was so well infiltrated by this force that the AU would tell the international community, mind your business. This is an African affair. And they were killing anybody of black color, displacing the black color with the Arab olive skin. So what happens in a situation, say, if we had South Sudan and Sudan and South Sudan and the Nigerian scenario, God forbid, and we have a Nigeria and a South Nigeria? Will it be the same kind of phenomena that is being ex uh, exhibited in, between Sudan and South Sudan that we're likely to see here as well? I said something to you. I said, as a nation, Nigeria itself is a product of failure engineering. So what you don't know is that there is an enculturation, a Nigerian enculturation, enculturation program that produces a people who cannot work together. It divisive people. So the point is, let me tell you something about Nigeria. If Nigeria starts splitting up, we will have about 345 countries at the end of the day. Because as this one splits up, they will find out that they cannot even work with themselves again. Then the next set will split up. Then the next set will split up. So what we need is a generation of patriots, people who have sound understanding. I remember some of the businessmen I used to talk to then who were in some of the axes where they were living. And I said, look, this thing is going to consume you. And when it comes, it's going to kill your business. When it comes, it's going to hurt you real bad. And what I found out is that the average person is so busy trying to make ends meet that thinking beyond a day or two or one year is difficult for the average Nigerian. So unless, by the grace of God, God raises for us God-fearing patriots who can sit down and think properly. Look, people are just seeing on TV uh, what happened in Benue. Are you going to tell me that you don't know that for years, when we tried to get the media to publish a lot of the things that are... Is there anything new about what happened in Benue? Have there been not much slaughters in Nigeria, much more than that, with parents crying, widows being created, and all sorts of things happening in the country? Well, well, well you know, we'll anchor other points. They always say a word is not for the wise. And 30 minutes, never enough when we look at this kind of issues. Well, we always appreciate your coming on this morning. Reverend Laddie Thompson is a strategic security thinker.